second cheek contraction. Focus on your baby. Oh, Jimmy, this baby can come in anytime, and I am anxious. It is induction day. It's the things that you do. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> Alright, so apparently everyone is afraid of my 3D ultrasound. But whatever. I think my baby cute, even though he had his face for some reason. I got him to set y'all up so I ain't got no pants on. None of my clothes fit anymore. I do have some maternity clothes, but I really need more maternity leggings. But at this point, like, I have a month left, so I don't want to... Waste money getting maternity clothes. I'm not gonna wear. So at this visit, I had my ultrasound. They said everything looks normal. The baby is actually measuring five days ahead. Hopefully that just means you know he's a nice, healthy baby, but not that we're about. He's about to be a big baby. I don't want a big baby. I want a nice, average-sized baby to push out. I asked her if he's still OP. I Meaning is he still? all limbs facing forward and she said she felt his back on my right side like his back and his butt and she felt limbs like on the left side which made sense because i felt a lot of kicking on this side especially like back here at one point um but she also said he's moving a lot she said i have plenty of time for him to get into position um, before he drops down into my pelvis so nothing to worry about but in the meantime i am trying to do some of those like spinning babies moves, I guess. Um, just to get him to turn. But I guess if he's gonna keep wiggling, look, like he's moving right now. He's five pounds, six ounces, I think. He has a big head. Got that from his daddy. His head is, his head circumference is measuring at 37 weeks. Everything they told me, everything looked good. The flow of the blood through my umbilical cord. It's amazing the stuff they can see in there. But my little 3D pick, he wouldn't, he wouldn't cooperate. He kept his hand right here. And the lady was going really fast. I would have asked her to do it again, but I'm like, okay, clearly she's in a rush. I do have an appointment after this um, with the actual midwife. And um, it's not like I was paying for it. Like it was just a part of my regular scan, so. I took what I can get, and a part of me kind of wants it to be a surprise, like whose features he has. I've been really tempted to schedule a 3D scan um, to see what he looks like before he's born. I'm like, you know, I'm this close, I might as well just let it be a surprise. Forgot I was vlogging yesterday, but it's the next day I went to work out, blah blah blah. So, right now I am trying to contact a medical supply company about getting a breast pump, and it's been interesting. I just want you guys to hear what I'm dealing Like, this is the stuff that really annoys me, but I really can't do anything but laugh right now because this is wild. So, 
Um, I called my insurance company to see what I need to do to get the breast pump. I already got a prescription from my midwife. So I called the insurance to ask them and they said there are four providers, um, medical supply providers that I can use. And they gave me all their numbers. So I'm just going through the list starting to realize why they gave me this. Here's what the first one does when I call the number. We're sorry, you have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. So I thought maybe I dialed the wrong number. So just in case I Googled the number and it comes up for this company. So, okay, ghetto. Next. Oh, that's different. It wasn't even busy the first two times I called, but I really want you to hear what happened the first two times I called. Wait, wait, just one moment. I'll be right back. Help you. So oh, Are they that busy? Okay, so when I called them initially the first two times, first of all, anytime I call like a customer service, it always sounds kind of grainy for some reason. I don't know what it is about the customer service lines. They sound kind of grainy, um, and sometimes they're even like too low. This was like crystal clear and super loud which i thought was weird and it sounded like a recording like you know how back in the day when we used to be like hey girl what you doing just playing this my voicemail like it sounded like that kind of thing like it was a recording so they pick up and they say something like um hello blah blah medical this is gina and so i started talking and she goes she's like hello hello and then you hear a very audible click like it sounds super fake, like a recording that they use to make it seem as if they can't hear you, it's a bad connection and it just hangs up. So of course when I pick up the camera, it doesn't do I called twice and it did that. And it was the exact same wording and everything. So it's like, okay, obviously this is fake. Um, and then as you see, like it was busy the next time I called and the time after that. And then finally they answered the phone and now she's saying they'll call me back. Is it that busy for y'all out here? Okay, so that's that's the second one. Let's try the third one. See what's gonna happen. I don't even know. Okay. Breastpumps.com. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Veronica. My pleasure. Thank you for calling. How hard was that? Like I don't know what these other two companies were doing, but this one company was on the money. So all I have to do now is go online, look at the breast pumps, place my order there, and email them my prescription. That's out the way. It's one more thing I could scratch off my list, but that's so crazy to me. Like two of these companies were just that unprofessional. So yesterday when I went to my appointment, um, the midwife asked if I've been having Braxton Hicks. I said, yeah, I have them here and there, like nothing bad or anything. As soon as I get home and eat something, I started having contractions and I swear they just kept coming. They weren't painful um, and they weren't like consistent enough to where I got worried. But actually before I even ate, as soon as I got in the car to go home, it's like all of a sudden I started having all these Braxton Hicks and I had them all day into the night. I just feel like I have a feeling that, I, re I mean, there's no way to know when the baby's going to come, which is kind of annoying, but I feel like he's going to come sooner rather than later. Like I feel like he's going to come before his due date. I predict the 17th. So we shall see. Um. Hey y'all, I hope this vlog isn't too sporadic, but I'm trying to give like a full overview of how I'm preparing for this baby in my third trimester. So hopefully I can weave this together in a way that makes sense. Did I introduce you guys to Bam, the newest addition to the household? He's three years old. He's a pug. He loves to be on the balcony. He also loves to chew on my panties for some reason. It's kind of perverted but you know it's what he does he's a sweet dog though now was it a good idea to bring in another dog into the house right before having a baby i don't know but so far he seems pretty low maintenance he's actually big dog yeah it's cool and i also feel i don't know something about having another dog here makes me feel like maybe he can help jenkins a little bit because jenkins is old y'all jenkins can't hear he can't see um i mean he might have he has to have like at least a little bit of vision left but not much because he runs into walls and stuff often. Um, but since the smell is still there, so I think that helps him get around, helps him find me around the apartment and stuff like that. But I'm hoping having another dog in the house 
will help him somehow as far as having companionship and it's interesting because bam for the most part bam leaves jenkins alone because jenkins is old and cranky and he picked up on that early but um he does i catch him every now and then checking on jenkins which is interesting anyway right now i'm watching a childbirth class on youtube i'm gonna link that below for any um of you pregnant moms out there because i have not taken a childbirthing class yet um i was supposed to take one maybe like a month ago but we couldn't make that one so i had to reschedule to do a virtual one which is next weekend but now i'm like kind of freaking out because i think i'm 35 weeks and now i'm realizing like this baby can come whenever he wants to like i have no control there's no way to predict when he's gonna come and now like every little symptom I have, I feel like, oh my God, is this going to be it? Is this like the first sign? So yeah, I said all that to say, I'm going to link the birthing class that I found down below. Um, for those of you who don't want to spend money on a birthing class or don't want to go out your way to go to one, um, this one seems pretty good. Um, everything, honestly, a lot of the stuff she's saying in the class I've heard before already. I want to look for like a breastfeeding. I know they have a breastfeeding video on here somewhere i'm going to try to find one and i'll include that in the description box too if i find one that i find to be useful and now the contraction's over so take a deep cleansing breath yeah. not as good as seafood connection but there we go hey guys so i guess this is like my 36 almost 37 week update and why do i sound so congested okay my allergies have kicked in the last couple of days um today i had a doctor's appointment and it was the first time they took a urine sample or a midwife appointment first time at this location for them taking my urine sample and they said from here on out they'll do that every visit to test for protein in my urine which i think is like a sign of I can't remember if it's diabetes or preeclampsia, one of those, I don't know. But it came back negative, everything was all good. Weight-wise, I'm up another three pounds, which I'm like, how? Because I weigh myself at home, and it seemed like my weight was like kind of stabilizing, like I wasn't really gaining anymore, which I've heard is normal as you approach labor. But when I went in there, I was a whole three pounds extra. Granted, I'm in the middle of braiding my hair, so that's a pound. I had on my shoes. I want to say that's a pound, but I always have on my shoes when they weigh me. So I guess I'm just still gaining. So I've gained at least two pounds over the course of two weeks, which is not too crazy. Baby is now facing this way. He's head down, facing this way. And now I could, I could pretty much gauge where he is now because at this point I'm feeling, I still feel most of the movement like near my belly button, which is interesting because I think like my uterus is like all the way up to here or something. I don't know. I can feel his little butt over on this side, and then I feel him kicking on this side, so I could tell he was facing that way, which is good, because that means as I get closer to labor, eventually, hopefully, he'll turn to face my back like he's supposed to. But yeah, the visit went good, everything went well. I had my group B test today, which is like where they test for the certain type of bacteria that's really common, doesn't harm people. Um, my wife said like one in four people at any given moment has it. It can be dangerous to the baby if the baby swallows it on his way out of the vaginal canal. So they test for that. Um, they do a swab of your vagina, your butt, and if it comes back positive, then they'll give you antibiotics during labor um, to treat both you and the baby to prevent the baby from getting it because baby's immune system is too weak to fight it. So yeah, hopefully that comes back negative though. Yeah, I got boobs. <laughs> It's really the bra though. I mean, my boobs are definitely bigger, but this bra is definitely like rounding me out and making it look like even fuller. All right guys, so today we are doing our virtual um, childbirthing class with the hospital. So I have a set up here, a little yoga mat and a laptop. Okay, everybody's ready? <laughs> okay, you can't abandon it. You just gotta hold it. All right, here we go. Your labor pain begins now. Hold the ice.
I want to ask for you to get comfortable where you are, whether it is in your bed, couch. I just want you to lay back and just get real comfortable. I am so at some point I'm going to ask you to close your eyes so that you can remove any visual distraction. Pretend nobody's here. Second, deep contraction. Focus on your baby. Imagine your baby in your arm. Look like it. So if you do a lot of distraction, you will feel the pain, but it will be not maximized. And we do not want to maximize the pain. We want to minimize it as you progress in labor. I'm on my way to my prenatal appointment. So I'm almost 38 weeks. Oh, Jamie, this baby can come in anytime. And I am anxious all last night. I kept waking up. Um, but then I was having like dreams, like these kind of halfway dreams. What are you doing? Where like I'm asleep, but it's not like it's all, it also kind of feels like I'm like half awake. Um, but I would just have these dreams where like I just felt uneasy. I don't know how to explain it. Like I didn't dream that I was having contractions or anything, but it was just fresh on my mind. Like this baby is coming. This baby is coming. Um, and there was a couple times where I woke up and I like saw a puddle on the floor like my water had just broke or I thought there was a puddle in the bed or some stuff I can't remember because you know you have like dreams and you just forget them but what I really remember is at some point having a dream that someone was laying their head on my stomach I honestly thought it was my bonus baby because he does that a lot and they were like move kind of rolling their head down just like repositioning and I jumped and pushed them and I woke up and realized it was actually big. I propped my stomach up on the side of my pregnancy pillow and his head was like just above my stomach on the pregnancy pillow, I think. And when I pushed, I was actually pushing him, which I don't even know how I like realized in my dream or in my sleep that he was laying right there, but I guess just cause I felt it. But he was like, what's wrong? Or like he said something to me. I don't know what my response was. Cause of course I had to wake up and like kinda analyze the situation like what's going on what just happened um but it was just weird and i'm already like anxious feeling like tonight's gonna be the night so it's just like piling up on the anxiety which i'm not don't get me wrong i'm not afraid of going into labor like i'm excited when it comes i'll be happy um but i do have for some reason i guess i have an appointment today i'm kind of concerned i'm gonna go in and I don't know if I expect to like just suddenly start having all these contractions or what. I'm just afraid I'm gonna go into the hospital and they're not gonna let me leave. Like, like you're in labor, so you have to stay. I'm glad my hair is braided. Like, I'm actually, I'm really, actually, everyone's been impressed with my braids just because for one, me personally, I know these are like the best box braids I've ever done. But yeah, I'm glad I got that out the way. So at the very least, I know my hair is gonna be done. That was really a concern. Like last week sometime or the week before I was like if I were to go into labor right now and my head was looking like this I would be pissed like I do not want my head to be looking a mess during labor because you know I want to have that footage and stuff to watch back and I don't want that to be a topic of discussion like how messed up my head is and the braids just make a world of different y'all I have been looking so bummy throughout my pregnancy even big has said like those braids he said this is he think this is his favorite hairstyle on me and I was like even better than a lot like yeah but I think it's just because it's been so long since I've had a protective style where I can just wake up and look like something heavy there is nothing like having your hair done yeah I'm headed to my appointment I don't know what they're gonna do today I have 10 minutes left on this car I think um, they're definitely gonna check my blood pressure my weight outside of that I mean they could do a cervical check um, they haven't offered one I'm not asking for one. I really don't want one because I feel like what's the point? My understanding of cervical checks is it just, like it tells you, you know, whether you're dilated in the face, but it doesn't tell you anything time-wise about when you're going to go into labor. So what's the point? And then there's the risk of infection just from them checking. I heard it's uncomfortable. So I don't want to, and I'm at the point where I don't want to have to deal with no kind of discomfort down there. I thought my camera cut off because the memory card was full, but apparently it cut off because I guess it overheated. It was hot outside. So I went to my appointment. Everything looked good. I did my urine, urine, urine analysis, urine analysis, urine analysis, whatever it is. They took my pee and tested it and it, there was no protein or anything. So we're all good in that aspect. Um, my blood pressure was good. I am 180.4 pounds, which you know. I didn't think I would make it to 180, but here I am. So the 
midwife that everything's been fine and like i said i'm probably not gonna do a cervical check she said that if they do one it'll probably be like if i make it to my due date that's probably the point where they'll do a cervical check to see like how far i've progressed um and at that point if i pass my due date i'll come in twice that week if i make it to 41 weeks i'll come in twice that week also if i make it to 41 weeks in five days they'll go ahead and start um the process of inducing me because at that point um the best option is to get the baby out but i have a feeling like i might have a baby next week like i don't i really don't feel like i'm gonna make it to 40 weeks but we'll see i lied y'all apparently big was never laying on my stomach last night i just had a dream that that's what was happening and then in my dream i pushed whoever was laying on my stomach off because it was hurting and then when I woke up, it turns out I was actually pushing him, which is kind of funny. And he was like, what? And he said that I told him, you, you were laying on my stomach. And he was like, oh, my bad. When I asked him about it today, he was like, I don't remember laying on your stomach. But he really doesn't know because he was in such a deep sleep. But I'm pretty sure I just made it up in my head. I was just very anxious last night. I feel like part of the problem was that I ate a bunch of do, -si -do cookies last night, like Girl Scout cookies. So maybe all that sugar kind of like threw me off too. I don't know. It was good though. It was worth it. Y'all, have all days for Big to need me to leave the house to bring him something. My stomach hurts. It's been hurting on and off since yesterday's appointment. Yesterday was more so pressure in my butt. Today it's been like stomach aches. And I used the bathroom, I thought I was done, but now I just got off the toilet and I feel like I have to go again. But he needs me to bring him this thing like right now. And I'm scared. Like I was saying, my stomach has been on and off all day with this stomach ache. And then I finally just had like a diarrhea type situation. So needless to say, I'm like, let me hurry up and get everything together because this might be it. I'm always out here looking so crazy and my lips, oh my God. Today's symptom is fatigue. I'm so sleepy. I could just stay in the bed all day, but I'm trying to push through. I'm getting the apartment clean today, so so I can get out of her way. I decided I would go ahead and go get my feet done. I'm getting all these signs that labor is coming soon, but I've also like I've had people say like, yeah, I had diarrhea, and then like within the next 12 hours, I was in labor and I had my baby. And then some people are like, yeah, I had diarrhea, and I was still pregnant two weeks later and it had to induce me. So it's like, it could go either way. You know, I'm gonna drive myself crazy with this whole going into labor thing. So I go to the bathroom and I'm about to sit on the toilet. And you know how when your brain just knows that you're getting close to the toilet and you really have to go? It like, like you really have to go? Before I could even go to pull my panties down, I peed myself a little bit. So. That caught me off guard because I didn't even have to pee that badly. Um, but I'm like, you know, it's probably just the pregnancy thing, the baby's lower. I pee, it was like not a lot at all. And then I go to wipe myself. And there's gonna be a lot of TMI in this video, okay? So it is what it is. I wipe myself and I look and there's like a little bit of mucus like on my pinky finger. I'm like, oh my God, what is that? So naturally I grab a mirror to look down there and see if there's any more. I wipe to see if there's any more, there's nothing. It doesn't look like my um, mucus plug based on pictures I've seen because people share pictures of their mucus plugs in like the Facebook groups I'm in. I don't know, it could be nothing, who knows? It kind of freaked me out a little bit. But anyway, I went to Target and I got a few things. Some stuff I got for my hospital bag and some stuff I got just like as like induce me not induce me but like ripen my cervix snacks is what i'm gonna call them there was a study and women who ate six dates six small dates a day had easier labors basically like it helped to ripen their cervix soften it um, and help make their labor shorter so i want to do that you're supposed to start at 36 weeks i'm at 38. so with that being said i tried a date and i had 36 weeks it wasn't nasty, but it wasn't good. Like the texture, it don't look good. And I just can't see myself eating six. Like six a day is a lot. So, um, I heard that Lara bars have dates in them. And it turns out that dates are like the first ingredient. 
But I figure I can maybe eat a couple dates, like in the morning, and then like have a Lara bar as a snack. And that should equal something close to six, I guess. Fudge brownie. I got the peanut butter chocolate chip. And I got the pineapple upside down cake. I think I might try this now. And of course I got this because you know pineapple is also supposed to induce or help induce labor. So in addition to that, I got these pineapple popsicles. Honestly, I hadn't planned on doing any like induction type things until I hit my due date. But you know, I might treat myself every now and then. I don't really believe this is gonna induce my labor. So I'm really just eating this for enjoyment. And everything else is just like additional snacks. Like I got some trail mix just because I was hungry while I was there. Supposedly you should bring candy just to help like if you have a dry dry mouth or something. I don't know, but I got it. So yeah, now I'm just back to trying not to think about not being in labor. I know he did me wrong too, bam. He went and got Chick-fil-A and didn't even ask me if I wanted anything. No, and I'm pregnant. Did you put my child. head on that? You know I'm not fully shy. You know I'm not putting you up here. I'm gonna blur you. I'm ashamed. I really can't believe you went to Chick Fil A and then asked him. I really can't that. believe you. That's you, wild. You know why? Why? Because I believe in starting a baby with the proper nutrition and health qualities That's why of your food. tomatoes look like GMO. I said the baby. I'm not a child. I'm talking about the baby so? that you're. you're uh, I'm just saying that's why your you're giving are life to. And your sandwich cold. And your fries, so All right. So, let's talk about what's happening today. <sighs> okay. So, um, yesterday the diarrhea came back. I'm thinking the only reason it skipped a day is because I didn't eat a lot. Like, after the first few bouts of diarrhea, I was a little nervous. So, I tried to keep it light with mostly fruits and vegetables, not a lot of meat. Yesterday, the diarrhea came back. Outside of the diarrhea, I felt fine. Like, I was, I have been extra sleepy, been needing, like, longer naps during the day. But other than that, I've been feeling great. Today, I woke up like I had to go to the bathroom. Now, mind you, I ate crazy last night. I made some, like, spicy chicken, like, teriyaki chicken. It was so good. With some yum yum sauce, brown rice, and broccoli. It was delicious. I figured I'd probably pay for it later. Woke up, tried to go to the bed. I felt like I had to go to the bathroom. Like I felt my stomach felt like I had to go to the bathroom, but nothing happened. So I had a bowl of Cheerios with oat milk, um, and the diarrhea ensued. <laughs> so yeah, I just sat on the toilet for a good, at least thirty minutes just now. And let's just say your girl is clean as a whistle. Then I stood up, and now I just have like some serious pressure in my lower stomach, like right up under my stomach. Um, to the point where I feel like I can't even stand up without it hurting. Um, and the only thing that seems to relieve it is me squatting. So it just feels like someone's like in my lower abdomen just doing like this. Like digging. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> it's not really like what I would call painful yet. But this is definitely an uncomfortable feeling. She would not answer. What? What's wrong? Any other time, my mother be sitting right in the house, ready to answer the phone. I can't think of nobody else to call. I call my grandma. She ain't gonna remember. That was years ago. Who can I call? Who do you call to ask? Other than a doctor. Um, this would be like the worst time for me to go into. Uh, I have my bonus baby. Big is far away. I mean, not really far, but far. Like, he's got it. I think he's at least like an hour away from me right now. I just don't know what this feeling is, and it's not really going away. It's just kind of moving around. Maybe it's just gas. It's really. It's really low to be gas. And it, I just can't imagine contractions just coming on this suddenly. Well, this would be comedic later if it turns out that I am in late. It'll also be kind of comedic if I'm not. Yeah, that's why I'm in pain. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So according to my last ultrasound, it said that my estimated due date was the 14th, which is a Saturday, five days before my due date based on my last missed period. My plan is to go ahead and start trying to, not induce, but like 
do certain things just to get him in the optimal position, mainly the mouth circuit. So Saturday, probably Saturday morning, I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to do that and see if that helps. I figure this weekend will be the ideal time for me to go into labor because um, Big is more likely to be free. The baby will be here in time for my mom to meet him. And uh, we just gonna get this thing over with. I can meet my son. So yeah, I'm about to head out to this doctor's appointment and I'll let you guys know what they say, if there's anything new. This appointment was pretty uneventful as I expected, but there was one thing. I did my urine analysis and there were trace amounts of protein and something else, two other things, I think ketones and I forget what the other thing is called. But because my blood pressure was good, um, the midwife said that she's not concerned about, I guess if it were just the protein, there would be a concern for preeclampsia. But because of the other two things, she's thinking I just need to drink more water, like I'm dehydrated. Which makes sense since I've been on and off dehydrated for like days. So I asked her about the mouth circuit and she said, well, she asked why I was considering it. And I said, basically, because I feel like he's been like facing sideways for the most part and just to kind of help him move back. And she said, yeah, it's good for a position. The way she like responded made me think like it's not basically like don't expect this to induce your labor. But for a positioning, she said it's a good idea. And then once she felt my stomach, she said, yeah, I think you could definitely benefit from the mouth circuit because she could feel like his limbs in the front. She also suggested raspberry leaf tea, which I've seen a lot of people talk about. So she said two cups of the raspberry leaf tea a day. She said the only thing is it's nasty. I'm not worried about that. I can chug whatever. Big gave me the go ahead. At first he was like, no, just wait till your due date. Just wait till he's ready to come because I gotta do this, I gotta do that. And I'm like, well, which one is more important? I'm not saying he has to come Saturday, but I wanna at least get him in place to where he's you know, in the optimal position to go ahead and come. Hi guys, so it is induction day. Just kidding. I am 39 weeks and two days, and I have decided that today I'm gonna officially attempt to do some things to kind of induce labor. Um, I don't really believe anything works as far as forcing your labor to start. But if your body's already ready, or if it's ready but something's not quite right, like the position of the baby, I do think that some things can help with that. So, first thing I'm gonna do is drink my raspberry tea. So I have that here. And I also like to let it get like about room temperature, um, cause it's too hot to be drinking hot tea. And then with that, I found that these Lara bars, I guess because they're so sweet, are really good with the raspberry tea. Like they add some extra sugar. I put a little bit of honey, maybe like a tablespoonful. Um, but I'm also gonna eat a brownie or two. What two? The brownie was a little too sweet the first time I tasted it, but the more I have it, especially with this raspberry tea, it's good. Oh yeah, two left. Hmm. But today I'm going to attempt to do the, not attempt, I'm going to do the mouth circuit, which is basically three positions that you hold for 30 minutes each. And they're supposed to help with the positioning of the baby. Like if you look down and my stomach is obviously lopsided. So I'm pretty sure this is his little butt over here. And then I feel a lot of kicks and things over on this side. So like I said, I think he's laying about at this angle. Even when I have what I'm guessing are Braxton Hicks contractions, it gets like even more pronounced as far as being lopsided. All right, y'all, so I just had this seafood boil. These are my leftovers. It's very spicy, and they say spicy food is supposed to help induce you, but I don't believe it, because I've been eating a bunch of spicy food, and I ain't did nothing. Oops, I don't think I pressed the right button. Hi, guys, so I started the <laughs> Very uncomfortable, my shoulders hurt. There was no flow across I that don't feel like I'm doing it right, but to sit there and heat up. I do feel like you might have turned because I'm feeling some some movement. Or Finally back on the call, shift right, supervisor so. recognized the release really so. I'm from the plant and it was something hey. I've never heard before. I did it. This is the house I grew up. All of a sudden I heard a radiation alarm. <laughs> I immediately went down the hallway towards the 
reactor building. His legs must be straight. Two technicians accompanied. Let's open up and build this. Ouch. Oh, I almost pulled something. All right, y'all, so I tried. I don't really feel like it did anything. I still feel like he's laying the exact same way. The second one kind of hurt my stomach so I felt like I might have been stretching a little too much. The peanut ball is probably a bit too big. And the lunch that I didn't record, I didn't make it the full 30 minutes. I think I did like 15 minutes, but then I had to go to the bathroom, so cut that short. But I did walk the dog around the pool one time, and then... I did lunges on the other side, coming up the steps, two steps at a time. So, I don't know, maybe that did something. I plan on doing this again, but I'm going to wait until tomorrow because I'm tired of doing it tonight. And that's pretty Man, much it. it. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm still pregnant. <laughs> not still pregnant. No labor underway, nothing. Not even a leak. Not a mucus plug. Barely a contraction. I do wait every time I wake oh, up. Shit. I always wake up to my stomach being super hard. Um, but we're on our way to the gym, so maybe this will induce me. Let's see. All right, y'all. That wasn't so bad. Um, I had to skip the last set of workouts because. I'm not trying to get diastasis wrecked out for all the planks and whatnot. Still no contractions or nothing, so I don't know. I got a feeling this baby is going past the due date. All right, y'all, look how this man installed our child's car seat for the ride home from the hospital. What baby he think about to be putting this? Facing forward, sitting up straight. I'm glad you passed the test. What te oh, you was testing me? I'll tell that lie. It's not even in all the way. Look at the, the cushion, how it's down. That lets you know it's still in the construction. No, that just let me know that you was being extra careless. <laughs> I'm so stuffed. Still no baby. I curb walk on my way in and out of the Waffle House. Still nothing. So here, what do you got to say? Okay, y'all. So it is Monday, May 16th. And I just lost my mucus plug, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so this is crazy. Let me sit down for this. So, Big goes to work like super early in the morning, so he has to be there at five. So he wakes up this morning and I wake up. I said months ago that May 17th was gonna be my baby's birthday. Cause I did the math and I was like, okay, technically I think my road due date is the 17th because you know cycle stuff i just know my cycle also he's been measuring ahead since like the 20 week anatomy scan but i think he was measuring like three days ahead which is like almost exact three days ahead then and then he was measuring like five days ahead by like 36 weeks or something so i'm like yeah this baby's gonna come early so i talked to my grandma last week and her brother my uncle was there and he said that baby's coming Tuesday because it's going to be a full moon. Now, I don't know how full moons work. Maybe it's different on the East Coast from the Midwest or the South. The Midwest? The Midwest. Central time. Because that's where I am. But I've been seeing that the full moon's actually last night. And people have been talking about the lunar eclipse. So full moon, lunar eclipse. And I keep seeing posts, people saying that the full moon, a lot of babies are born. So I'm like, this might be it, this might be it. And my mother's supposed to come Tuesday, which is the 17th. So it's like all signs are pointing to this baby's probably gonna come the day my mother gets here. So she has to go straight to the hospital and then she'll get a whole, almost a whole week with her new grandbaby. Child, I woke up this morning. Big just happened to send me a text with a picture of the full moon because the moon is still out because it's so early. Soon as I look at the text, let me look at the time that he sent it. He sent it at 5.05. .05. It just makes me think, like, let me look in the toilet. I'm sitting on the toilet because I had to pee. So I was feeling a lot of pressure. And mind you, when I woke up, I felt perfectly fine. He even came over and said, how's my baby? I said, comfortable. As soon as he left, I started feeling pressure. So I get up. Of course, anytime I get up, I got to pee now. So I go to pee. But when he sent me the text of the picture of the full moon, I said, let me see if anything. So I don't want to miss nothing. I know... People keep talking about this mucus plug and bloody show and blah, blah. 
Child, I looked in the toilet. It was this big old piece of... It looked like clear, like chicken fat with a little bit of blood in it. And I was like, I think this is my bloody show. So I had to call him. This is so gross to TMI. But I had to call him and was like, um... He was like, what, your water broke? I was like, no. But is it possible that you left something in the toilet? He was like, um... I might not have flushed and I was like I don't think you let this out so <laughs> I don't think this came from you I was like I think my mucus plug just came out and it's huge I know people talk about like the mucus plug coming out in pieces over time sometimes it grows back it might not mean anything but this piece is so big it's like that has to be the whole thing it looks like it has blood in it which would be my bloody show I think so I think this show about to be on the road y'all I'm excited I'm also like anxious like oh my god all of a sudden I don't feel ready my bag is mostly packed, but now of course it's almost 5:30 and I can't go back to sleep. I'm too. I'm like wide awake now. I gotta clean the apartment for my mother come. Now I'm confused because I'm like, do I call the emergency line or just send a message? Cause I don't. They never say a call if your mu mucus plug came out. They only say like, um, heavy bleeding, pain. You know, basically when your contractions start. And I've been feeling like, like right now my stomach is super hard. It just feel like a Braxton Hicks to me though. Um, there's been some added pressure. I asked the, the Facebook group. This girl said, go to the hospital, darling. Some people don't feel pain. And the crazy thing is, I just read yesterday a couple people talking about how they never, one lady in particular on the peanut app, was saying she never felt a contraction. She got all the way through active labor, got to the hospital. She was like eight centimeters dilated. And I said yesterday, I was like, why should that be me? I'm not gonna feel anything. And then by the time I get to the doctor or I'm in the car on the road, that baby, this baby will be ready to come out. I guess especially with it being my first time, it's like you don't want to jump the gun and be like, oh, I think it's happening. And they're like, okay, girl, calm down. You don't have no contractions. Um, but I have seen people post about, like I said, not feeling the contractions. One lady was like, she was at, the, she went to the doctor for some reason, maybe her water broke or something. And when they like monitored her contractions, they were like, you don't feel that? And she was like, no. And it was like a really strong contraction. So maybe I'm one of the blessed women that just don't feel nothing. Who is that, girl? I didn't mean to call Kia. Um, you think it's still gonna be that long? <laughs> Could be. I don't know. Do you remember losing your mucus plug? Ugh. <laughs> nope. Where's your mucus plug? It's like what plugs up your cervix to prevent infection. Yep, that was it. That was why I should move it the other night and so I finally forgot about that. <laughs> I didn't even know about it until I was pregnant. Uh, people in this Facebook group saying I need to go to the um the doctor or something. I'm like, I don't think so. They didn't just call. keep saying that. It'd be irritating me every time you say that. I might have just jumped in the phone and slapped yourself. I was just telling <laughs> You got a whole baby inside. I know, but I also I also don't want to, like, I want to stay home as long as I can, even if I was having contractions. Like, I don't want to go to the hospital until I have to. Why are you going to be more comfortable at home? Because it's home. I don't want to be sitting in a yeah, cold hospital room. Yeah. Huh? She can't just go to the hospital and they just put her in a room. She will be in a waiting room. Then they'll check her out and then they'll send her back home. All right, y'all. It is now 8.15. I feel like I haven't gotten a whole lot done because I spent the last like hour on the phone with my mom and Kia. So I do, I kind of feel like I'm leaking a little bit, but it's so little I can't really tell. I'm talking to Big now about what he plans to do as far as work. He's talking about just wait till Wednesday. I'm like, this baby has to come out at some point. Like we can't keep trying to schedule. He's gonna come when he wants to come. And honestly, I'm ready for him to come. I'm ready to meet my baby. The waiting game like is what really sucks at this point. So I think I might have. Overdid it a little bit. I, um, I've been cleaning and the whole time my pelvis, all day my pelvis has been like, it's just a lot of pressure. It's not painful, but it's uncomfortable. But in addition to that, because of the workout yesterday, my lower back is like super sore. So now I'm at the point where I think like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to tell the difference between an actual contraction and me just being sore. Oh, and then also I just laid down just to rest for a minute before I run to Target. I was gonna go in Target, get some steps in, but I think I'm good on that. I got plenty to do here that's gonna get me up, keep me up and moving. And I wanna do like a cute little kind of baby moon night since 
technically this might be me and Big's last night with just us. I got the bright idea to try to plan a little something. Just get like, you know, some little, I got some strawberries. Some romantic, melt some chocolate for us to dip it in. I'm gonna get him some Moscato. I can't drink, of course, so I'll probably just drink a little apple juice or something. Like some candles, call them a little music. Just as a little, you know, unwind night before the shit hits the fan. Um, it is five o'clock. I know it was five o'clock, so it's been exactly 12 hours almost exactly 12 hours since I lost my mucus plug. At one point, I thought I had every like I understood everything, everything was very black and white, but now it's feeling really gray, and I don't know what's happening to me right now. <laughs> it's very confusing. Oh my god, oh my god, my pelvis hurts. This might be a contraction, but I don't know. Cause I don't know what a contraction feels like. People say they feel like cramps. This definitely does feel like what a cramp probably. I've never had bad cramps. I rarely have cramps, period. But this is what I think people are talking about. That's what my heart said. I wanna be with you always. You are my world in every 